Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to be focusing on this black BMW 6D and we're gonna be putting new oil in it, taking the old filter out, which I haven't even checked yet. I'm dreading the state of that after sitting for a whole year and also retopping up the coolant with new coolant. And that's purely because I do have to do the transmission fluid change on this car and all the fluids are out of the car. And therefore, as many of you guys know, to do a transmission change, you have to start the car and go through all the gears. And I can't do that with actually all the fluids out of the car. Now, bearing in mind, I'm not gonna be touching the water pump. And that's purely because it was actually changed back in 2014. As I said to you, the mileage would have been around 120, 130K. This car's only on 170K. So I'm not gonna replace it with a new one I actually bought because as many of you guys know, they're not cheap. Um, so I'm gonna be using it probably on my six series if that one shows on the stamp that it hasn't been changed. And we'll be changing it on there because I'm not gonna be putting it on this car because as I said to you, this car's not going back on the road. So even if it did fail, just stick it back on the lift and I'll put a new one on this car as well because it's not going to be driven on the road anymore. So it doesn't make sense to put a new one on for it to sit there. But I will do it, obviously, at some point, but just not now because it's just not needed. So it'd be a complete waste of money. So let's get onto this video, get the oil filter out and let's refill up everything that I've took out. I've got new oil filter, I've got the new oil for it. You guys know me, Shell 5W40. So let's get onto this video. God damn, get it done with you. When the blow up now, everybody's so unusual with it. Shit. But said times in his rhymes because his memories. We run into New York, so you know. Okay, guys, so here we are with the actual M52 engine. And as I did say to you, this is the only thing we actually haven't taken out, which is the actual the oil filter. Now I'm going to be taking it out. And obviously, the oil I'm going to put in here, I am going to have to flush again. And that's purely because this car had been sitting for over a year and I'm not gonna be comfortable with just giving this one oil change and leaving it. Obviously I have to top up the oil just to be able to start the car. So I'm gonna use this filter ratchet to get it undone, just like that. Now it's untightened. Just untighten it so it comes unloosened enough so I can just untighten it with my hand, which I can now. Now once we unloosen that with my hand, let the oil drain back down into the sump. You can see right there, it's gonna be quite black. And that's purely because the oil hasn't been changed in way over 5,000 miles, because obviously I stopped driving it. Now I've got tissue handy, just in case. Um, I don't wanna make a mess in here. And you can see there, the oil filter doesn't actually look in bad condition. This is actually really good. Considering, you know, this has been sitting for over a year and we actually exceeded the mileage, which I exceeded 5,000 miles on this car because I knew I was gonna have to change it. And I actually bought new oil um, when I actually had it on my quick jacks and threw it in the boot because um, I was gonna change the oil and I never did. This oil filter was actually not in too bad condition. And if you look here, it's only a bit crumbled, but nothing major, just normal for these um, N, engine, N series engines cars to be like that, especially with the oil filter housing. They always end up a bit crushed, but Apart from that, it's actually in good shape. I was expecting it to be in worse. So do make sure when you remove your oil filter, you actually keep this filter pit here. This is very, very important for your vanal system. Um, I tell you this all the time. Some people don't even realize, and there's still people even still today, that go and do their own oil change and realize they're missing this piece or don't even know it even exists or that you actually need it. And if yours don't have that, that will be the issue of why your car's probably running lumpy, rough, vanos codes, because you don't have that filter right there. Now I do have the new oil filter. I've got actually loads of these on my shelf. Um, you've got to expect I've got three of these engines, so I have to keep them all stocked up. They're not expensive at all. I just buy them in bulk off um, Amazon. I think they're like four pound each for the original Bosch ones. They're not expensive. And I've just got loads of them. Just when it's time to actually change the oil, I've got loads of this and obviously loads of my shelf 5W40 that I'm gonna be using for this car. Obviously there's our new shiny filter to go in. And we've got our new, um, obviously, O-ring and our orange ring as well, which you guys know me, I always take it off here. I never leave the old ones on. And just like that, it's a bit stiff to get off, but it will come off and then we need to get this one off, which is our green one. And then that one's off as well. Obviously, once that's off, we're gonna open our packet. we we'll put our new O-ring on, the filter cap. Just like that. Then we'll put our new green one 
on the actual filter itself. You can see that's gone straight on. Now what we're gonna have to do is oil this up, the new O-ring, because otherwise it won't lock in properly. So I'll just oil it all in. Then we'll put our filter in. And as you can see there, it's a new filter. Just slot that in. You just wanna push it down so it goes down properly. And just like that guys, it's now tightened. Now we're gonna go ahead and put a new oil in. So it's gonna open this up, use our funnel right there. And we'll use the oil that I always recommend. You can see here, Shell Helix Ultra 5W40. This one we're gonna be using. Now I believe this engine is 6.5 liters. So do remember that as well when filling up the oil. So that's five liters in. Then we've got our other one, again, which is Shell. So you guys can see, I'm not using anything different than I ever do for this car. And we'll just pour 6.5 liters in there. And that's it, guys. That's the oil now back in the engine, and we've got the oil, new oil in. So now we can go ahead and start this um, when we need to. But now we're gonna move on to filling up the coolant, and I'm gonna show you how to bleed that on the water pump itself. Okay guys, so now moving on to the coolant. What we're gonna do is just remove the lid. Then what we're gonna go ahead and do is get our funnel, pour our coolant in, wait for it to get full. Then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is put the heaters on max and then low heat. And then I'll show you and tell you how to activate the water pump to bleed the system. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just pour the coolant in just like that. Do remember guys, it's a new reservoir that I actually put on. So, it's not an old one. You can see there, the color of the coolant is blue, which is what BMW recommend for these cars. You can see now we've got a functioning stick as well, which we didn't have before. You can see how much it's taking guys just to fill this up, because it's pulling it all down into the system. And it's going to pour a lot more down before it gets full because we completely drain the system. You can hear it all running down. You can already see there were five liters in and we already used the whole bottle. And the one I'm using, guys, is this one right here, which is Coma Extreme G48. This is the one that BMW recommend and it's not cheap by any means. You won't see a lot of other people using this. They'll try and use Prestone, which is not good for the cars. You should not be using Prestone um, green coolant for BMs. And anyone who tells you that is an absolute idiot because you should not be using that. I know people say coolant's coolant, but Preston is bad for these cars. Um, I only use what BMW recommend, and that is this G48 stuff or their own stuff. You can always see the dipstick keeps going back down, and that's where the coolant's being taken down from the car. Um, we're gonna have to start it up in a minute. You can see the dipstick's going back down again. You can see it bubbling on its own, and I'm not even bleeding the system. That's how empty the system was. You can hear as I'm pouring it in, keeps going down every time I fill it. You'll see there all the air bubbles coming out and then that will go back down on its own as the bubbles are all rising inside there and we'll bleed the system. Now we're gonna go ahead and um, bleed the coolant with the car. So what you gotta do here, I'll leave the camera there so you guys can see it clearly, is obviously turn the car on. Then we're gonna put the heaters on low. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is hold down the accelerator pedal and the water pump should activate. So we're just gonna push it down and you can see just there, it's now activating. You can probably hear it as well. It's very silent as it operates. It's not loud. And that's how I know this water pump's working very well. And all it's doing is gonna bleed the system continuously now. It will do its own cycle for a continuous amount of time. It will go faster, slower, faster, slower until it bleeds all the air out of the system and then it will finish on its own. And what we're gonna to have to here, we're gonna to have to call it ready to pour more in. So when it actually bleeds it, um, I can top it up. You can hear here now it's going a lot harder while it bleeds all the system. All you do to activate this, guys, is literally hold your accelerator down for 10 seconds and it will activate it. Or if you want to, you can choose to do this another way, which is doing it on a scan tool, of course, um, to bleed the cooling system as well. You can do it on a scan tool if that's how you feel more comfortable doing it, but it's a lot easier to do it like this. I just thought I would show you how it actually works so you guys can actually see. When it comes on again, you should be able to see it. You're gonna see the dipstick go down anyway 
when all the air comes out the system. But I've got the heaters on high and low. But you can see right there, as the water pump activates, it purges all the air out of the system, make sure there's no air in the system at all. And that's why it keeps doing it, because it could be trapped anywhere, so it just clears all the system in the thermostat, the whole cooling system. So when you start it, you haven't got no air locks, you've got no risk of overheating. So it's doing this thing, and it, like I said, it can take a while. So we'll just leave it to do this thing, and when it goes down, I'll top it up. But obviously, do bear in mind to check it the following day as well, because coolant, as it sits as well, can go down as the system's rests and rests itself down completely. Um, your cooling level may drop, so do keep an eye on it. But usually, most of the time, it doesn't drop, and it should be fine where you've left it anyway. And that's the whole idea of these electric water pumps, guys. They actually work a lot better than your old mechanical water pump. I actually prefer an electric water pump purely because of this reason, because it helps push any air out of the system, because as many of you guys know, BMW's cooling systems were very, very weak on the M series engines with the M54, M52, so they tried to redesign it with this. Yes, it's more expensive, but the cooling systems are actually a lot better overall in the long term because of the electric water pump, because it manages to force all the air out, so you don't have with head gasket problems or any kind of problems like that. So we'll just leave it to push all the coolant around the system, and we'll see if that dipstick drops down. But I'm, I can say one thing, I'm very happy that we got that old coolant out because it was all red. Um, at least it's now this one has the actual factory coolant in it, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. There's still loads of air bubbles coming up. Oh, that was a big one. Another big one. Just goes to show you bleeding these systems once do not work. This way you have to make sure you bleed them thoroughly to get every bit of air out of the system if you want this car you know, to run pop properly and not overheat. You have to remember, these cars don't actually come with a temperature gauge, so you can't actually see if they're overheating, so that's why you have to make sure you bleed it correctly or get a scan tool up and watch the temperature as the car's running. And the whole reason you want to have your heaters on as well is so it flows through all the heater matrix and it just gets in everywhere, any air out the whole system, so then you're perfectly ready and good to go. Now what it's doing is just pushing all the coolant around again to push any air out of the whole cooling system onto the top here to bleed it. And you can see, even though I topped it up, it's actually all gone down already. Um, and that's what I mean, it just shows how much air was still in the system. This has actually took six liters, which is about probably what come out of the car as well. Um, so yeah, to say the least, it's took nearly six liters of coolant to fill this whole system back up. That's why it ain't cheap to do a coolant flush, especially on these, if you're using the correct coolant that is from BMW. I mean, they, the coolant I got is around 25 pound for five liters, so basically for a gallon of it that works out to around 50 pound. Um, so you've got to bear that in mind. If you are going to use obviously Prestone, which I strongly advise against, then obviously it's going to be cheaper, but I would not recommend putting Prestone in these cars. And I think that's why a lot of you guys end up with a lot of issues with your water pump because of the chemicals that they use in that coolant. Um, there's a certain product that they actually put in the coolant specifically for BMW and other cars that doesn't cause problems to corro cause corrosion on the water pump impellers or anything like that where that Prestone does. And that's why I do advise against using Prestone. You will not see me ever use that in any car I've got, ever. Um, I'm really strongly against Prestone antifreeze. Okay guys, so it looks like now we've finished the bleed process. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this cap back on and then we can finish up now. And this is our job done with the Black E60. So now we've got the new oil in, new coolant in. Now we can start it when we need to, to do the transmission oil change. Um, we're gonna be changing everything on the transmission. And obviously we need to start the car to be able to shift it through the gears to obviously then recheck the oil. So I needed to get this done. And like I said, it wasn't an issue for me because I'm not gonna be changing the water pump anyway because it's already been done on this car. Okay guys, so as you've seen me, I've now put the new oil filter and the new coolant in this black BMW 60. Obviously, because as I said to you, I need to change the transmission fluid on this, but I also need to start the car. And with no coolant and no oil, I can't do that at all, because obviously I need to let the transmission come up to temperature. I know many of you are gonna say I should have really done that before doing all this. That's correct, I should have. But in the same sense, I need to flush all this and do all these other parts anyway. And at some point, this car's gonna have to come off my lift for at least two weeks, because I've got another car I need to get on here. And I need to start sorting as well. Uh, so this car is going to have to be delayed for another two weeks. So I'm just trying to get the simple things done that I need to right now and then put it back on the list. So I'm going to have to be driving it off and back on anyway. So it makes sense for me to put all the fluids back in. I am going to get the transmission fluid changed before we actually get it off. And obviously I've still got the door, still got the fender, the mirrors, still got a lot to do on this before it actually comes off my lift. But obviously 
I need to get it all done. You guys have seen, I've been doing a lot on this Black E16, obviously. You know, I'm very, very pleased that it's coming out this way. I know many of you don't seem to believe I actually have the water pump and thermostat, so I'm just gonna quickly show you. So I know many of you have been actually donating towards the car to have this actually restored. Many of you have donated quite a lot of money to help get this car restored. And I just wanna show you that the money has been going on the actual part. So you can see here, we got a male, and this is the thermostat inside. We've also got a new male um, water hose for the cool, for the thermostat and water pump. And we've also got the Peerberg water pump in there as well. Let's open it so you guys can see. It's all in the packet there with the new bolts as well. So I haven't lied to any of you guys, it is here. Just this one didn't need it, as I did say to you on the MOT history and on the stamp it said 2014. And that's the same on the thermostat. And that's one of the reasons I won't gonna put this on because it is a waste of money. You guys will get to see me do this because I know many of you funded this because you wanted to see me actually do it because I know there's a way that many people don't tell you how to do it, which is obviously putting the coolant in um, without actually filling up the water pump and I will be showing you that when we actually do it. But like I said, I'm gonna save this for the six series and do it on that. So I just wanna say thank you to all of you guys that actually funded this project on this car. I many of you who keep sending me donations via PayPal to help support getting this car back glorious again the way it was once before. But obviously, as I said to you, it's not going back on the road. It is just gonna be stored in my garage and you guys are gonna to get to see it. I don't want this car going nowhere. As I told you from before, it's not worth it for me. And I don't need the money from what this car's gonna fetch. This car's only worth about three, four grand. I seriously don't need that kind of money at all. Um, for me, it's better for me to actually keep it. And that's why I'm putting a lot of time, effort, and all the money you guys are giving for the donations. It is going towards all these parts. As I said, the water pump, we've got the new hose, we've got the new thermostat, and you will be seeing me do that on the six series. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And like I said, I thank all of you for the support you guys are giving me on this Black E60, and obviously all the donations. Thank you very much, guys. It's BMW Dr. Dean here, and goodbye.